Hello and welcome to another video with Print Design Academy here where we are teaching graphic designers to be experts in print design. My name is Dave and today we are talking about this. Now let me give you a little story here. As part of teaching graphic designers about print, we started the Print Design Podcast. Now on that show, we interview graphic designers about print projects that they've been a part of sort of bringing to life and all of the decisions that are made kind of behind the scenes and what's involved in bringing a print project to life and to a package on a store shelf and that sort of thing. But we also interview suppliers and, and makers of tools to serve graphic designers in their print journey. Now, one of those companies happens to be Pantone. Now, in episode 38 of the Print Design Podcast, I interviewed Lou Prestia, who's a senior product manager at Pantone in their graphics division. And uh, as part of that episode, I got to thinking after, you know, I'd love to teach graphic designers more on how to use these tools specifically in their print journey. And even more importantly, how designers who are creating brand guidelines and those brand documents for their customers can use Pantone books because there's, there's a purpose for these and a great spot to use them. And you know, this video is not to dive into that. But what I wanted to do here is walk through each of these items, where you would use it, why you would use it, and what makes it so unique and so special and, and why you need to add it to your collection. So part of teaching graphic designers how to use these formula guides, I partnered with Pantone and I ordered this, this collection here. Now the box that arrived was significantly larger than what I was expecting, which led me to believe that there was a whole lot more in here. The other telltale sign was when my son went to bring the box in the house and he could barely lift it. Like there's obviously more in this box than I was expecting. Now I did film an awesome unboxing and reveal of these things, but unfortunately, as luck would have it, uh, the microphone died and I didn't realize it. So here's just like a quick little fast forward segment and look at my face, look at the amazement. Now in that portable guide studio that I ordered, it included these books here, which is your solid formula guides for coded and uncoded, also your CMYK to Pantone color bridges encoded and uncoded, the new CMYK books encoded and uncoded, as well as the metallics and the pastels and neons. What I thought was the full meal deal. What I got was also the binders, that your chip binders for both solid coated and uncoated, as well as the pastels and neons and the metallics and this wicked wooden display stand for the whole thing. So what I wanted to do is just go through all of these items here and talk about where they could be used in your graphic design career and how I personally use them um, in mine, in my print career. So let's dive in. We'll just push this over to the side here, hopefully not off the table. First one, let's pull out the binder here. So in this one here, this solid coated chip binder. How I use this is when I'm working on files with customers and proofs with customers. So whenever I am creating a file and sending a digital file or a proof that won't be color accurate because we're using um, solid Pantone colors, I send along one of these chips. Now if you haven't seen a chip page before, it's basically the same kind of thing of, as the formula guides but it's got all these little perforations across it. All these little perforations 
all over the page. And what that means is that when you're sending a proof to your customer or when you're sending an electronic file to your customer, that's not gonna be color accurate if you're using these solid colors, these solid Pantone colors. So what you do is you actually find the color in this binder, peel, or, or like basically peel out the color that you're sending and send it along to the customer either with the proofs or, or with whatever you're sending them. And that way they can see the actual real color that they're going to be getting on a final print result um, instead of you know looking at their screen and, and guessing at what the color is gonna look like. Now the other spot where it's great to use these Pantone chips is when you are working on a new brand and you're deciding between a bunch of different color combinations. Sometimes, you know, when you have these formula guides and you've got 18 different pages and you're trying to bend them and make them all work, it's kind of tough to visualize it and see it all. But if you could rip out a little piece of each of those colors, lay them all out on the table so you can look at them all at the same time and just you know, look at the group together rather than a bunch of different pages that you're trying to hold together, um, it's a lot easier to see those color combinations. So whether you're a big studio or just freelancing on your own, these can be very helpful for your brands and building out brands, as well as um, you know, proofing to your customers and helping the accuracy of that when it comes to color. Um, and of course, the chips are available in the coated and the uncoated, as well as in your pastels and neons and your metallics. Now with the formula guides, I'm gonna work with the coated all the way through looking at all these, so coated paper, and like this is, it's still wrapped, it's, it's still wrapped. Let's That fresh print smell. Brand new, never opened Pantone book. This is so exciting. Now what most of you are probably familiar with when you're talking solid colors, um, I know they're called Pantone colors, but really they're solid colors, um, are, are these guys right here. These two books. Uh, the solid formula guides for both coated and uncoated. So I wanted to just chat a little bit about these and then get into the differences between the coated and the uncoated. Um, you know, visually mainly, obviously. Uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about the color bridge and then we'll get into the new CMYK books and a little metallics and a little bit of like pastels and neons. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, so these formula guides. Um, I, you've seen these before. You've either handled them back when you were learning graphic design in college. Maybe you've got a set from, you know, 1997 or something like that. You gotta get, get, get some new ones, please, if they're that old. If you're missing pages, just get some new ones, get some new ones. Um, or maybe you've seen pictures online of them and you've never actually handled some before. So if you're doing any kind of brand design, I highly recommend that you get, at the very least, this solid formula guide set, uncoded and coded. Um, the reason I say that is because if you're trying to pick colors for a brand, yeah, you can do it in Illustrator or on a screen, but if those colors are to be printed, at all, whether it's direct mail, sales folders, business cards, um, you think of like packaging, you think of all of the things, it's likely that you're gonna print those colors. And it's way better to see them in real life, actually printed, rather than trying to you know, select them on a screen because whatever you see on the screen is not necessarily gonna match like real life in print. So the coded guide, formula guide solid coded, as you know, coded means it's coded paper. So that could represent your gloss. Then the uncoated guide is obviously uncoated paper. Now, why would Pantone make a formula guide for coated and uncoated? Why would they do that? Well, let me just show you. Have a look at this. Same page in each book, so the same colors. Do they look identical? No, no they don't. Depending on what paper you are printing on, that color, even though you know it's the same on your screen, is going to be represented differently in print. So just know that. And I always recommend to designers that if you are creating brand guidelines for a company, always just like pack all the information in there for printing as well. You have gotta pick a coded, the coded solid colors, the coded CMYK values, the uncoded solid colors, the uncoded CMYK values, as well as your hex, your RGB, like all of the things. Put all of the things in there so that that brand can maintain consistency on all of their pieces. So when you're picking colors for a brand, 
you know, you can fan these out. You can get a good look at the actual colors. It's great. It's a great visual tool. I personally prefer the Pantone chips for this because that way you can actually like set a bunch of different sets of them around the table and get a look at all of them rather than having a few pages that you're trying to you know, fold and line up together to get an idea of what the two colors look like together. Um, it's just easier, but if this is what you have, then yeah, use this. It's terrific for that. So the solid coated and solid uncoated formula guides are just that, the solid colors. These are, you know, think of it like a paint. It's a specific color. It's not a CMYK combination to make a color. The color is, like, that is the color. All right? So now moving on to the color bridge. Now, what is the color bridge? The color bridge takes your solid color and then shows you the closest possible representation of that color with CMYK. Some colors, pretty close, look not bad at all. Other colors on some pages, you're like, what the heck is that? You don't get the same kind of brightness and vibrancy in most of the colors when you're in CMYK. And the color bridge is a great tool for that. So you may look at it and say, okay, well that's the closest equivalent to it, but actually this one here in CMYK looks closer you know, to that color to me. So I'm gonna you know, use this for my CMYK values in my brand guidelines, right? So that is what the color bridge is for, showing you how the solid colors bridge over to the CMYK. Perfect, love it. And again, in the color bridge, they have both coded and uncoded. Why? Because the colors look different depending on if they're on coded paper or uncoded paper. Now for the new CMYK books, got the coded one here. Fan this thing out, look at it. Come on now. Come on, looks so good. So these are CMYK colors chromatically arranged for you to be able to just look through and start selecting colors. If you're creating brand guidelines or doing design for a customer, they're printing in CMYK and they want a nice purple, a nice orchid-like purple. Well, you could flip to that purple kind of section and just start going through and finding the CMYK values that best align with the color that you want um, to be represented in print. A fantastic tool for all of your CMYK printing. Um, just allows you to nail certain colors rather than just looking at it on screen and saying, yeah, it kind of looks good in Illustrator, but how do you know what those colors are gonna translate to um, in print on an actual piece of paper? The CMYK coded and uncoded guides from Pantone are an amazing tool exactly for that purpose. So now kicking it back over to solid right now, um, let's get into the metallics. I love the metallics. That's, that's all I'm gonna say about that. I love the metallics, the shine in these things, the wide variety, they're adding tons of metallic colors every year. And I've always thought, you know, you look at a Pantone book, you look at some of these solid, um, solid formula guides and you're like, that's gotta be all the colors that are out there. That's gotta be it. Um, and then every year there's more based on, you know, customer recommendations, um, things that they come across. Um, it's incredible. It's incredible that they keep coming out with more and more colors and they're just beautiful. Like look at this a range of um, metallic colors. You know, we're way beyond the traditional gold and silver. Like this is leveled up. Any color you can imagine in, in metallic has gotta be in here, right? So I love the metallic solid coated Adachine. Now, now keep in mind, if you're printing on uncoated paper, you aren't gonna get a lot of life out of a metallic ink. It's just not built that way. The, the uncoated paper absorbs too much of the ink. You don't get a great um, you know, shimmer off of things. But if you're printing on coated paper, metallic inks can absolutely sing. Now, one of the other really cool guides that I absolutely am a big fan of is the pastels and neons. Um, not so much the pastels personally, but they look really pretty, but the neons. Um, I have seen a trend right now in food packaging specifically um, where there is a lot of neons being used and printed to draw mega attention on the shelf. Like if you picture some of these 
neon inks in you know, a, a string of boxes up on the shelf. How do you walk past that? You can't. That's way too in your face. There you go, Pantone 811. If somebody used Pantone 811, like, you're not gonna not look at that thing because it's just so obvious that it's gonna catch your eye. So keep an eye on that little trend. So there you go, this is the ultimate tool chest here for your brand guidelines, for your branding projects, for your packaging redesigns. Like the majority of things that you as a graphic designer are going to work on that will end up either becoming brand, brand guidelines or actual printed projects out in the world, you will find in these tools immensely useful. Now, if, if budget's tight and you wanna keep things, keep things tight budget-wise, at the very least, get the two solid formula guides. Um, all the links to these things will be down in the description of this video, so you can check those out. I will also link the uh, interview with Lou and the Print Design Podcast down in the description. But at the very least, add to your tool chest the solid formula guides, both coded and uncoded. They come as a set, and it will just drastically help you with your brand guidelines. If you already have a set of Pantone guides and they are more than two years old, well, honestly, if they're more than one year old, you would want to replace them, but I, I get it, especially if you're, you know, you're freelance, you're hustling, you've got a family and all that jazz. You know, every two years, okay, we can work with that. But if you're like, if you're into three years and beyond, you gotta replace that bad boy. Paper is naturally yellow over time, so these colors, especially the lighter colors in the book, are, are changing. They're, they're changing on you right now as we speak. Um, now, if you got a bit more dough, definitely stretch for that portable guide studio that I originally ordered with Pantone, because that is an incredible collection that includes your formula guides, your color bridges in both coded and uncoded, of course, includes the new CMYK books, as well as the metallics, pastels, and neons. It's got it all, which is great for, again, those brand guidelines. Um, also, again, for packaging design and any print that's becoming a real thing out in the world, super important to have those and you will find them immensely useful for that purpose. Now, if your budget's big, you have a big budget, get this, get this whole thing. You will find it so helpful to have these chips when you're talking to your customers about color and the color of whatever it is that you're designing. You'll also find it really helpful for deciding brand colors, laying out all of these different chips, looking at them all at the same time, you'll be able to make some decisions on color and where you wanna go with things. Again, super useful. And this set in their studio, like, come on. Somebody walks in and sees that, you win. You win, son. So that's it. That's my walkthrough of these incredible tools put together by Pantone. They are incredibly useful for your graphic design career. Now, if you wanna see these tools put into, into practice, I walk through sort of an unboxing but real brand project um, with Chris Logsdon, who's the creative director over at the Sasha Group in this video right here. So check that out and see how these tools were actually used in that scenario, that brand guideline scenario.